talking about today. We're talking about gaps in myeloma education. And again, this is the community driven discussion. We sent out a survey to all of our myeloma community. And in hindsight, duh, Audrey, you're going to get tons of answers and tons of questions if you're sending it to the entire myeloma community. But I'm glad I did because the questions that came in weren't the same. And it depended on where people were in their journey. And it depended how much they knew already about multiple myeloma. And it depended who they were working with. And no question was better than another. Um, but Patty, uh, who worked primarily on this with me, and Marty Lou, who couldn't be here tonight, we spent hours poring over your questions, finding answers to them, um, finding resources that could help you understand the topic better. And I'll show you in just a minute the Google Sheet that we created. That's going to be shared with each of you um, who filled out the survey and who signed up for the webinar tonight because we care about your questions. You submitted questions about financial things, treatment options, nutrition and fitness, and so much more. Um, I'm, we're looking to educate a community not only to receive answers and critical information, but to teach you how to find those resources and answers for yourself. So like I said, today we're going to be going over Health Tree resources and programs to help find answers to your questions. I acknowledge again, Health Tree is not the only place where you can find answers to your questions, but because we already have the answers to the multitude of questions that you asked, I want to show you where you can find those in addition to that Google Sheet that we're going to be sharing with you. We care about your education. We want you to know what's out there. And um, again, my team is here. They're going to be briefly explaining their programs and how these programs help answer questions of the myeloma community. But they're also here to serve as listeners. They're here to learn what were the questions that were asked why do these questions matter and how can we help answer these questions in the rest of the 2023 year, 24 year, and as time goes on? Because again, your questions matter to us. So before I turn the time over to my team, let me briefly show you, and I might pause the screen sharing for just a moment. This is going to be overwhelming. I'm just saying it out front, but this is what... Um, Patty and Marilu and I worked on for hours and hours. So we took your questions and then we found Health Tree University resources, which we'll be explaining more today, webinars and events previously, articles and other Health Tree resources. And we combined them in a um, <laughs> huge Google sheet so that you can get answers to your questions. We wanted you guys to know and again, this is very small. My intention is not necessarily for you to read it right now, but for you to see what we've done. We, we care about your questions. We care about your concerns. And each of you, again, will be getting access to this Google Sheet. We're going to download it as a PDF. And I also included things to remember because I know that this can be overwhelming. So I want you to know that, again, your questions matter. I'm aware of uh, each individual question. Unfortunately, answering all of them would take days, not even hours, days. And um, I want this to be meaningful for everyone. So now it is um, my team's turn to talk about their programs, what the, what the purpose of their program is and how it can be used to help myeloma patients and caregivers get answers to their questions. So we're going to start with Roz, who um, goes over, who is over the coach program. So Roz, go ahead. Thank you, Audrey. That is so impressive. Everything that your team's done to prepare for this meeting. I'm just in awe of that spreadsheet. So lucky members of this group that get to uh, use that as a resource. That's pretty cool. Well, I'm grateful to get to be here today. I'm Rosalyn. I have the opportunity to lead out the coach program. And I wanted to share a little bit about myself just in context of what we're talking about tonight. I'm a caregiver. My husband was diagnosed with myeloma in 2015, and it, he was just 39. And at that time, our kids were young, seven, nine, and 11 years old. And I had so many questions. I was so scared. And 
you know, we were introduced to people with myeloma, but it was really hard to find someone under the age of 60, right? This, and he was someone that could relate to the questions that I had based on where we were at in life. And it was lonely and really scary time. And when I had the opportunity to help with the coach program, when it was created in 2019, I jumped at the chance because it was exactly what I wanted, which was having a peer-to-peer -peer support program where individuals, myeloma patients and caregivers could be matched or choose a coach that has experience in the areas that they were seeking. I so much wanted that. I would have loved to talk to someone to ask them how I could parent with myeloma and keep working while I was being a caregiver and parenting and balancing all of those things. And the coach program allows us to do that. It's personalized where the support and resources that are shared are tailored to what the person is needing. Um, patients and caregivers can, can go in and browse the coaches and filter according to what their specific questions and needs are, the areas of experience that they're seeking that and would need in a person to be able to answer the questions that they have, whether they're financial questions or um, whether or not they should have a transplant or as they're trying to decide on treatment decisions to be able to talk to someone who's had specific treatments. Um, so many of those things, it really just uh, allows that to be personalized and for the support to be provided. Coaches really just meet um, their coaches, as we call them, where they're at. They meet them where they are and listen to what their concerns are and then help provide answers if they have them, if they have experience that they can share related to that or resources that they're uh, familiar with or have used, they can share those resources. And it really just allows for that personalized, really tailored support. Um, the thing I love about it is I use the word personalized a lot, but it is so personal where a relationship is built and it becomes a trusted place where people can open up and, and feel comfortable asking the questions that maybe they don't feel comfortable asking the nurse or their doctor or anyone else. And, and um, myeloma just brings so many different nuanced issues and challenges that it's nice to know you have a friend. Coaches can become a friend that you could talk to and and share those concerns with and 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 those specific needs that you have. Uh, I think that's that's where I'm at. That's great. <laughs> I don't know what else to say? I mean, yeah. I'll, I'll stop myself there. I'll just keep going and going. But program <laughs> really is. Um, we have so many resources on our website that are informational and the coach program adds the personalized touch to that where the coaches share information. But again, it's just really tailored to what you need and when you need it. That's the other thing. Um, I'll wrap up with this, Audrey, is I just had um, a patient reach out and she had registered with the program and she didn't select a coach because she was so overwhelmed. She didn't even know what she needed and times passed. And she reached out saying, I need someone to talk to now. And I have questions. And, and that's just what we see with myeloma, right? Each different phase brings new questions and, and possibly um, new resources that we need. And so it's nice when you can reach out and talk to someone and they can provide that what you need when you need it, which is a great resource. Completely agreed. It's an incredible program. Thanks, Ross. We'll now hear from Cindy, uh, who directs the Health Tree University. Hi, everyone. And Audrey, I hope I get a copy of that spreadsheet too, because it looks really, really like a, a good um, resource there. So just like I'm Roz, I'll give you a little bit of background, just in case you don't know me. I've been living with multiple myeloma since 2008. So I was diagnosed a long, long time ago. And back when I was diagnosed, I quickly learned that patients who were knowledgeable and who were actively involved in their care tended to have the best outcomes. So I, I wanted to empower myself to learn all I could about myeloma. But I started running into problems. There were a couple of problems I ran into. First of all, when I started looking for answers to questions, I had to look at a number of different places to find the answers. And once I found the answers, I had to decide whether or not those answers applied nowadays because myeloma is one of those cancers, luckily, that 
it keeps on getting updated and we're getting new and better treatments and different ways of doing things. And if something I was reading was two or three years old, it might have been out of date. So I, I didn't even know if the information I was reading was correct at that time or out of date. And the other problem that I was having was when you're newly diagnosed, you don't know what you don't know. So I didn't even know what questions I should be asking. Um, back in 2008, they really didn't have Facebook groups. Um, they came, well, they, they did, but they were for the college kids. They weren't for the older people like me. So we, we didn't have the myeloma Facebook group that I could ask questions. And we had something that was called a listserv was for those of you that have been around for a long time, you might know what the listservs are, but people were asking questions on that listserv, questions that I would never even think of asking. So that was getting me scared because I didn't know what I should be asking my doctor. I didn't know what I should be researching. Um, but in time, um, I met up with Jenny. Jenny and I did a lot of advocacy together. So we became friends and she had this idea that we should create a university, a place where all your questions could be answered in one place and, in, and where it would be ordered in a way from very beginning basic information all the way to the most sophisticated information that these classes that we produced would be taught in units so that one class would build upon another would build upon another and that you really didn't need to know what questions to be asking because the questions were being asked for you but if you did have a question a way to search for that question so that the answer would come up so that's that was how we started creating health tree university to see the need of having all the resources in one place at your fingertips. And we wanted to make sure that these re the information we were sharing was the most up to date. And that's why we decided that to answer those questions, we weren't even going to put it in print because sometimes when we put things in print, they become outdated by the time they're printed. We decided that we would be interviewing the key myeloma specialists from around the world. And that's what we are doing. We're going to all the academic meetings and roundtables to ask the myeloma special specialists to answer the questions, the questions that you have and to record the answers to them. And, uh, and as a curriculum director, it's my job to continually going through that curriculum and updating it. So we made a first run at it and now we're back and doing all our classes over again because we've became much better at our animations and at asking the questions and getting the things that we know. So. I think later on they're going to show you how to use Health Tree University, but the reason we created it is because we wanted one spot with up to date information and all the questions that you could ever ask. Thank you, Cindy. Very well said. Um, Anna, we'll turn the time over to you to talk about the patient experience team. Hello, everyone. Um, happy to be here today. Um, so, what my team does is help you find the right resources um, at the right at the right time hopefully um, today they're going to explain how to use some of the resources that we have uh, but you might have some questions in the future uh, or whenever you're trying to use them uh, you might uh, maybe have some technology problems or uh, there's something that is not as clear um, so we are happy to provide personalized help. I'm going to send our uh, 800 number in the chat in our email. Um, so you can uh, call us or email us if you have any questions. We also have a chat uh, on the Health Tree website on your bottom right. We have a chat there. Uh, you can always go there and um, send us a message so we can help you with any um, support problem that you have um, when you're trying to use any of our resources. Uh, that This includes Health Tree University, the coach program, um, and Health Tree Cure Hub, uh, or any other resources that you can find in our webpage. Mm, so um, our team... Uh, 
they, we have two um, support teams and one is more um, focused on like support technology, how our website works, all the resources that we have. And those are called patient navigators. And then we have the myeloma navigators as well. Uh, our myeloma navigators, uh, like Patty here today and Jimena, um, they have medical background and they can help you understand your myeloma. Uh, so this is a great, great resource. This is super, a super tailored resource for you guys. Um, and um they do that uh, when whenever you are using CureHub. Um, please note that they cannot provide medical advice, uh, but they can certainly explain everything about your myeloma. So even if you watch Health Tree University videos sometimes and read uh, articles, sometimes when you're looking at your numbers, your labs, your genetics, it's still confusing. So we have that service. Um, and uh, the way that this works, if you wanna have a call with any of our myeloma navigators, uh, first, you have to create a, an account in Health Tree Cure Hub, um, and then uh, we need to have your uh, records so you we can prep that call in advance. So you go you go there and you connect your records. Again, if you don't know how to do this, you can always call our number, uh, email us on support, or use our chat, and someone will be happy to explain how to do it step by step. And once we get them, um, you have um, to let us know. You can email us again uh, or call us and let us know that you want a call with a myeloma navigator. Um, and the call will be a schedule. It's important for you to um, let us know all the questions that you have so you can have a great call with them and they can prep what all the resources that you need and everything that you you want to be explained this is great for you this is a great resource to be empowered so when you go to um your your specialist you already know a lot right and you just are there to ask the right questions like what's next so what should my treatment be we don't want you to be asking just basic basic questions to your doctor if you can do that uh, with someone else and just get there and ask the more advanced questions and be more proactive in, in um, your decisions and everything that you need to decide along with your specialist. Um, so that's what our team does. Uh, but what I always say is we're really happy to help because we are. Um, and just don't hesitate uh, to contact us. We're here to help. And um, yeah, that's what we do. Thank you, Anna. Okay, so then we'll finish uh, this portion with Valerie. Well, um, Hi, everybody. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> so happy to be here. Um, so I'm Valerie. I've been uh, kind of thriving with this myeloma for about eight years now. Uh, and as a uh, life myeloma patient, uh, I began to see that there were uh, specific uh, and unique um, you know, issues that we deal with as patients, uh, whether it's uh, dealing with the disparities, the health inequities, and things of that nature. Um, and with the Black Myeloma Health uh, Program, uh, kind of started with Jenny, uh, really feeling that the resources and programs that uh, Health Tree had to offer were not being taken advantage of. The Black patients were not taken advantage of that. So um, that's kind of where the Black Myeloma Health Initiative uh, stemmed from. Um, and what we do with that is really work to make sure that Black patients understand myeloma. We provide that educational piece to things. Um, it's no secret that Black patients have poor outcomes when it comes to multiple myeloma, uh, very underrepresented in clinical research. So we strive to provide education, to uh, you know, to bring education to the patients um, so they can have uh, just as good uh, outcomes as other patients. Um, excuse me, uh, we also invite them to clinical research uh, by educating them to let them know what's available, uh, breaking a lot of the uh, myths that's associated with clinical research that keeps uh, a lot of the Black and African-American uh, patients away. So it's about educating the community. Um, I 
oversee the uh, Black Myeloma Health Community Chapter. And what we do with that chapter is provide education uh, through uh, doctors, through uh, other patients, through healthcare professionals. Um, and they come in and they talk to uh, the chapter members. Um, I also oversee the Black Myeloma Health Facebook group. Um, it's a place that we connect, uh, provide education, uh, support, and really just a, a place that people can come to uh, learn more about myeloma, but connect with other Black patients and talk about some of the, you know, the obstacles and challenges that we face every day uh, as a patient. Um, I'll put some information in the chat box there. I welcome you to uh, join us, uh, you know, in those two communities there. We welcome you. Yeah. Thank you, Val. <laughs> It's very exciting. It's it's just very exciting for me. These are people that I love and people that I care about. And one of the reasons why is because they have good hearts. They're not just doing this because it's their job. They're doing it because they care sincerely. And uh, that is that is kind of beyond the job. Well, I guess it's part of the job description, but just know that we care about you deeply. We care about your questions. We care about your education. We care about your well-being. We care about a cure. And that's why we do what we do. Now, you don't need to participate in every single program that HealthTree has. I certainly haven't even accessed every resource that HealthTree has. But what we want you to know is to know that it's out there and know how to use it and know, most importantly, how it can answer your questions. So Jimena and Patty are going to get started um, briefly explaining Healthtree University, Healthtree Cure Hub, and a couple other resources that can be of benefit to you. And again, any questions that you have about these programs, um, about how we can better answer your questions, are welcome in the chat. So Patty, go ahead. Well, I guess Jimena, but Patty, go ahead sharing, and then Jimena can go ahead. Hello, everyone. I'm really happy to be here. Um, I will be explaining you what is exactly Healthtree University and how can you benefit from it. Okay, so we created Healthtree University because we know all patients have Googled their disease. And although some sites provide clear information, um, other may lead to confusion. As an, and as a newly diagnosed patient, or even as a more experienced one, this can make you feel overwhelmed with all the information that is out there, and it's it can even be harder to keep up with the constant updates. So, Healthry University has all the information you need to be informed and in charge of your care. It's the first and only free comprehensive curriculum for myeloma patients and their caregivers, and in one single place, you can learn everything regarding multiple myeloma. It is taught by experts, and it has reliable information that can solve all the questions you have. You may wonder who is teaching. Um, we asked the top world-renowned myeloma doctors your myeloma questions, and this doctor treats thousands of myeloma patients each year and conducts clinical trials for the treatment used in multiple myeloma. So our tell our team filmed their answers to provide you with the best information in the world. We created hundreds of videos covering Maluma basics and more, and even more complex topics like genetics. During the videos, you will find animations and graphics that will help you understand complex information in a more like simplified way. And after each lesson, you can test your knowledge or your understanding with a quiz to help you reinforce what you just learned. The main idea of Poultry University is to help you educate yourself before your doctor's appointments. So you can spend your clinic visit discussing your situation, all your harder questions instead of just myeloma basics. We know that myeloma landscape changes, but informed patients have better outcomes, as Cynthia told us. Uh, so we invite you to all get informed and navigate your disease. That way, armed with information from Healthry University, you can advocate for yourself and be in charge of your care. 
So now I will teach you how to navigate Helltree University step by step. So first you can go to helltree.org slash myloma slash university and you will see uh, under apps and programs. Once you click it, you will see something that says university and learn from experts. When you click on there, you can get started. When, over there, we have a quick tutorial in case you forget one of these steps or how to navigate, but in there we have the myeloma basics that answer the question, what is multiple myeloma? When you go in there, you will see that um, the lessons are divided in parts from uh, understanding the basics to a more um, specific questions. So in there, you will see the lessons that you have learned so far. You will also see once you click on any of them, you will be able to hide or show the quizzes so that you can reinforce your information. And there is also a way to see which lessons you have seen or which ones are missing. So we have the faculty members as well where you can see which doctors are talking in the videos, which doctors are participating. For example, here is Dr. Peter Borges and Dr. Shahi Kumar. So if you do not find a specific topic you can search, just make sure that it says all courses, and then you can type on the search bar. Um, whichever topic you're looking for. I, for example, search stem cell transplant and I came across uh, one, a single video on a lecture and then a whole chapter on auto stem cell transplant and another whole chapter on allogenic stem cell transplant, which is really awesome because many people have questions about that. There is another example for example, MRD, it's a hot topic right now, and it has been. So when I type that, I find a beta on clinical trials, which is, is also a video. And I also have the basics on MRD testing that will answer the question, what is MRD? Thank you, Jimé. Um, so I just wanted to mention before we move on to the next part that well, Audrey and I, we were going through the questions and making the spreadsheet with all the resources. For most of the questions that you guys had, we were almost always able to find a video within Healthy University for all of these questions. So this is what we wanted to show you and to give it a special section during this uh, session that we're having with you to show you how to find these specific questions by using keywords in the search bar or just looking by yourselves and trying to find these questions because for every question that you guys have, almost always we were able to find something in Health Tree University that was useful or related to that. And now we're going to move on to the next section. I'm going to talk about treatment and lab results resources that we have. And the reason why we chose what why we chose this is because many of you had questions about specific drugs. Some of you also had questions about how to find clinical trials for a specific situation. It could be relapse and refractory multiple myeloma, uh, clinical trials for MGUS, for high-risk smoldering. There were many different questions, but they were all uh, along the same theme. So uh, treatment information, clinical trial information, and the most common topic was lab results, how to interpret a specific lab result, how to, what does this mean? Why um, MRD, bone marrow biopsy? And we, we were gathering all these resources and we just noticed that we have plenty of information out there, but as you saw in the spreadsheet, it can be quite overwhelming. So we wanted to show you how to find the basic stuff that we have so that if you get any similar questions regarding treatment or lab results, you know how to find that. Um, so this is the list of what I'm going to be talking about. 
we have a myeloma medications page, which is a list of the myeloma medications and all the relevant information for each of the drugs. And many of you had questions about that, so I'm going to show you how to get there. Then we have treatment options, which is a tool within a Health Tree Cure Hub. So for this and for the clinical trials, you do need to have a Cure Hub account, but I'm going to show you how to get there as well. And finally, moving on to the lab section, we have a document that explains the lab results, all the myeloma results that are relevant for, for myeloma, and also the previous events, because we, we've had many events about the same topic, which is understanding myeloma labs and many different versions of this uh, webinar. We've had for kidney disease, we have had for MGUS specifically, we, we've had many versions of understanding myeloma labs. So we wanted to show you how to find these events as well. So the first resource that I'm gonna share is the myeloma medications. For all of the resources that I'm going to show, you have to go to healthry.org and you will get to the landing page and I'm going to show you how to get to the specific resource. So in this case, you will go to help and resources and you will get a drop down menu displayed such as the one that you can see. And in this case, you will find it below patient resources. There's the list called myeloma medications. And after you click there, this is the page that you will see. Uh, you can see that we have the, all of the drugs that are relevant to myeloma. They are divided by the type of drug or the class that they are. And this is not everything. You can scroll down and you will find more drugs uh, that are relevant for myeloma. Many of you had questions about different of these types of drugs. So I wanted to show you how to get here. And just for the sake of giving an example, I'm going to show you what happens after you click on CARVIT. After you click on each of the drugs, you'll get a similar page such as this. You will find information about how it works, so the mechanism of action of the drug, how it's administered, uh, you can even download the patient brochure, which goes more in depth and has more technical things or even more information if you do want to go deeper into this subject. And we have uh, linked to more videos, some are YouTube videos and some are Health Tree University videos for each of the drugs. So this is another way where you can get to information about the drug and then move on to uh, Health Tree University and go deeper in, in there. Uh, once you scroll down, you will also see information about whether you're eligible for or not, depending on, on who is it for, who it isn't for, and the most common side effects, which is a very important topic, of course, when you are taking a medication. This was just an example, but we have this for each of the drugs that we have on the list of myeloma medications. And we keep updating that as new drugs get approved. We, we keep updating that page so that you have all the relevant information. So that was the myeloma medications list. And now we are going to the ones within Cure Hub. So for this, you need to go to apps and programs after you get the menu. Uh, below navigate your myeloma, you will click on CureHub, which is the platform where you can track your myeloma and find treatment options, which is what we are going to focus on in this example. After you click there, this is the dashboard that you will see. And I just wanna mention that this is the dashboard that you will see if you already have an account. If not, you will go through the onboarding process of creating the account and answering some questions connecting your medical records, and then you will be able to access your, your dashboard, the one that you are seeing here. And it is important to connect your medical records for the treatment options and for the clinical trials, because what's different between the myeloma medications list, list that I just showed you and the treatment options is that these treatment options are generated based on your specific uh, records. So 
uh, on your treatment history, on your genetics, on all the factors that need to be taken into account. So this is very specific for you. So if you don't connect the medical records, it's just going to show you a list of all the, the combinations and they might not be suitable for you. So once you have your account, you can go to treatment options and it will generate a list similar to this, depending on, on your treatment history or different factors that are in your, in your profile. Um, also something that's different here than the myeloma medications list is that this is the combinations, not just each of the drugs. So uh, just to give you an example, I'm gonna show you how it looks like after we click on IPD, which is exasami, pomalidomide, and dexamethasone. This is the page that you will see. We have the most basic information, who is it for, who it isn't for, so that you can know if it's relevant for you. The summary of how the combination works or any important and really relevant information. When you scroll down, you get even more resources about this combination. I found it very interesting that some of your questions were actually requesting uh, evidence-based articles about a certain uh, myeloma drug combination. So this is where you will be able to find some of these articles uh, once you click there. It will take you to an external site depending on the type of article that we found and that it's relevant for this combination. And the supporting media. Whenever we find um, videos that are including all the medications, we put them there. But if not, we also have the videos that talk about each specific drug that make the, the combination so that you have all the information in one page. And so now we're going to move on to the clinical trials section. This is also within CureHub, so I'll just go through that one more time so that you remember how to get there. You would go to apps and programs. Then you would go to CureHub again. And below treatment options, you will find the clinical trials section. Uh, again, this is something that you guys were requesting. And I wanted to show you how you are able to find clinical trials. So once you click that, you will get a list of clinical trials. And I just want to mention that the list is generated once you click on clinical trials, but in order for you to find one that is relevant to you, you need to find uh, search for specific keywords. For example, I'm going to use the search bar to type high-risk smoldering. So some of you actually were asking for high-risk smoldering uh, clinical trials, and this is the way that we would help you find it. So after I clicked on high risk smoldering, these are the ones that were generated. There were more if we scrolled down, but I'm gonna show you how it looks after, after you see one that you like. For example, I can see that this one is recruiting, that it's interventional, that it's actually for high risk smoldering myeloma. So it might be interesting to a patient that has high risk smoldering myeloma, right? So once you know that you are interested, you can click on learn more and you will get even more information about each clinical trial. And I wanted to mention that it's really important to go through this information because we have who can join, who cannot join, the study description and the details. It's very important because there might be some things that make you eligible or not to a specific clinical trial and it varies from one to another. So it's really important just to read those. And also something that's important is your location. Not all the clinical trials are available in all the hospitals. So you might want to see in which hospital it's being held so that you can know if, if it's within your area or not. Um, just to show you how it would look like if you click on study description, uh, you would get even more information about this clinical trial, its objective, secondary objectives, which is what the researchers want to find out with this clinical trial, and what you would be doing. So what, how it would work, um, how often in this case. Um, 
and again, this is just an example, but that's the way it would work for any of other keywords that you would search. Like if you search for MGUS or uh, high-risk myeloma or relapse and refractory, this is the exact same process for you to be able to find clinical traps. And so those were the most relevant resources that we have for treatments. And now we'll continue with the lab results. The first resource that we have is a document that we created. Uh, and it, it actually has two versions, one which is more complex and more in-depth and one that's more simple and more basic so that as we've been saying, it's different if you are just recently diagnosed or if you're uh, a myeloma expert yourself. So we have those two options depending on the one that you would prefer. And actually this is the question that I get the most when I talk with patients, the most of the time I spend is explaining lab results. And I always see that they are very happy to finally know what their lab means. And uh, I don't know, most of the time they say that um, they don't feel like they have enough time to talk about all these with their doctors. So I think these resources are really helpful for this really important and basic uh, part of myeloma, right? Understanding your lips. So let's go to this resource that we have. We have that again in help and resources. As below patient resources at the bottom of the list, it, it's literally called lab results explained. After you click that, it will take you to this page and you can see that we have, it, it has two buttons, one that says complete version and the other one that says simplified version. So the complete version is, of course, the more complex one, the one that goes really in depth. So if you would like that, we would click there and it generates a PDF that you can save on your computer. You can print it if you prefer reading it physically. And here is where you could search for the, the specific lab that you want to, to know more about, right? Um, this is the index. So first we have a myeloma summary. So it, speak, it talks about um, staging and just myeloma basics. After that, we have all the, the test results that are relevant for myeloma with each of the lab results. Um, I wanted to make a special mention that we also have explanations about bone marrow biopsy and imaging tests, because even though they are not lab results, it's relevant to understand your response, the myeloma activity, and just in general, it's also important to understand that. And so we, we added a section for that as well. And finally, genetics, because we also get a lot of questions. And of course, it's really important to understand your, your genetics, right? Um, this is an example of what a page of the document looks like. Um, here we can see that we wanted to know more about the light chains. Uh, you see all the labs that were tested, the kappa free light chains, the lambda, the ratio, the reference range for each of them, what it means. And again, we are linking Health Tree University videos because uh, this is another way you can access that, right? So you're already reading about light chains and now you want to learn more about that. And you can just go ahead and click, for example, on the first question. It will automatically take you to Health Tree University to that specific video that's related to what you are reading. So that's another way of getting more involved and going more in depth with, with each subject. Um, and this is just the video that was linked to the, to the document. And then we have the simplified version, because again, uh, it might be very different or it might be even overwhelming if you go to the complete version and you don't, you feel it's very complex, but we have the simplified version if you were just diagnosed or if you just want to understand the basics. Again, it will generate a PDF that's called Understanding Your Myeloma Labs. And if you see it's different, the other, was, the other one was texts with lots of tables and this one, it's more like a presentation. So we're just giving you the slides. So it's very, really more simple. This is an example of the, uh, what, what you would see in this document. The, here we are explaining what the M-spike is, 
uh, what the tests are, the normal result, and then the free light chains, what is the free light chain, the heavy chain, and the reference value. So what's normal, right? And so that was uh, the basic document that we have for understanding your labs. But we also wanted to share with you um, how to find the previous events that we have. Because we, we've already had many of this, and you might find the recordings of one that you think it's relevant. In this case, and this would work for any other event, you would go to the search bar in healthtree.org. In this case, um, we type for the information that we want, want to find, in this case, myeloma labs. And you can see that we have plenty of resources. We have total, we have 1,368 results. So that's overwhelming, right? But in this case, we just want to focus on the event. So after clicking that, you can see that, well, the first one is the one that we're having today. We recently had one that was called Actually Understanding Myeloma Labs, and that was just held in June. We also had one for interpreting your kidney labs within myeloma, which was really different because um, it, it was specifically for patients with kidney disease within myeloma. So some labs are different and of course, it's a different experience, right? Uh, another one tracking your myeloma labs. And if we scroll down, we can see that we have many others. And I'm gonna show you how you would be able to get the recording. So I'm going to use this as an example, the MGUS recording. Um, after you get there, you can find the basic information, right? What was the name, the event description, so that you can read if you're actually interested in that webinar when it was held. In order for you to, to watch the recording, you would click on this button and it will just take you to the, to the recording. So mm, there you can see the event. And sometimes instead of watch recording, it will say request recording, but that's easy as well. So you click on request recording and it'll auto-generate a message uh, for the patient experience team. So our support team that will help you get this recording. So you just need to click on send so that they can get the message. You will get a response from one of our uh, patient experience agents and they will send you the link. So um, that's also another way that you would get it depending on whether it's watching or request, but it's pretty easy. And um, well, I just wanted to mention that I gave this example for my Loma Labs and the events, but for every topic that you can think of, you will get some results in events. So for example, you guys had questions about MRD, about CAR-T, about nutrition. If you type those keywords, that's, that's I guess, my, my advice to you is find the relevant keyword of what you're looking for and just use the search bar and you'll see that we have plenty of information there. Um, Audrey? Yeah, thank you so much, Patty and Jimena, for that amazing presentation. I hope that our audience was able to just better understand all of the amazing resources, but specifically the ones that they shared. Thank you so much. Um, now is the time for you guys to tell us your thoughts. We have about 10 to 15 more minutes where you guys can kind of just share what questions you have about the programs, what questions you have about finding answers to your questions. Um, again, we're gonna stay away from medically-based questions tonight because we wanna focus on the program um, and, and how we can help you be proactive in finding answers to your questions. Um, just to give a couple examples. So like one of the questions that was asked um, was, is it the end goal of all physicians to get us to be MRD negative? And as we were searching, there was literally a Health University video that answered that specific question. So don't be afraid that your question is too specific. Patty's right that using general keywords to find, to narrow down the multitude of resources is a good idea. But don't ever think like, oh man, 
my question's too specific. I won't ever be able to find any information on it. Now, let's say that you read the huge PDF that we're about to send you and you're like, okay, they still didn't answer my question. Call the patient experience team. It's a free number. They're more than willing to help you. And if they don't know the answer to the question, they're willing to investigate with you, not to put more pressure on your team, Anna, but they, they love helping and they respect your questions. And so don't ever feel like your question is too dumb, too specific, too whatever. We care about all questions. Um, you can put your questions in the chat or you're welcome to um, raise your hand virtually and speak out loud. You're welcome to raise your hand by clicking the reactions button if you're on a desktop or laptop computer and then click raise hand. Or if you're on a, uh, if you're on a, excuse me, if you're on a tablet or a mobile phone, you're welcome to click the three horizontal dots and then raise hand uh, in order to indicate that you'd like to speak out loud. For those people that have used our program before, I would love for you to put in the chat what your favorite program is. What is your go-to program besides Google is not an appropriate answer right now, okay? <laughs> but when you're looking to, um, what's your favorite resource that Health Tree has specifically or something else that helps you find um, your answers to your questions? And I'll read this comment from Donna out loud as you guys are thinking about this. Um, I love this webinar. There is an old Chinese folklore, teach a man how to fish instead of giving him fish so the man can feed his family. So true, Donna. I feel so empowered. Thank you all. Thank you for being here and for taking it in. Can I um, raise my hand? No, 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 no. You're good. You're good. You're good. Oh, you hear me? <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Um, This is just amazing. I've really, I should have, Thank you all. This was, I'm overflowing because it's like you ask the universe, I'll say the universe because I still know some people have problems, but some questions. And now you you all just answered those questions and I love it. Thank you. I had so many questions about my labs. I have an upcoming um, doctor's appointment in October and now I feel empowered how to go in there and address my concerns and, and feel like I should be able to get answers. If not, I need to find a new doctor. So not that way, but I feel empowered. I appreciate it. So. Well, thank you. thank you, Donna. That kind of feedback makes the hours worth it. Like, Thank you. I, I, I really appreciate you. Uh, Nancy says that she likes the graph of lab results over time. That's actually not something that we shared, but Patty, do you want to kind of explain that cool feature that we have as well. Yeah, we actually didn't go there today, but it's a tool that we use a lot. Uh, once you create your your hub account, you go to track my labs, and you you can actually see the graph if it's if your labs are within the normal range, if they are trending upwards, and we've actually had patients. Um, like Donna says, I feel very empowered because they they, they actually tell our, our, their doctors, oh, my myeloma is progressing. My, my M-spec is uh, this percentage high because we've had that conversation with them. We've uh, taught them how to interpret their labs. Um, and yeah, you can use the, the graph in the track my myeloma labs as uh, one of the many tools that we have to, to feel empowered and to to track your myeloma. Very well explained. And again, we can always go into more detail if you call or text us, we'll be happy to help you or email us. Um, Jay says, this is amazing. I should have been exploring more and now I will. What a huge effort your team has made. Thank you. Jay, thank you for being here. That's the first step is really kind of you wanting to educate yourself and learn more. I always say like, we could have done a thousand, like we could say a thousand, oh, I should have done this, I should have done that. But the only thing that we can change is the present and then therefore the future. So congratulations for being here today. And there are plenty of resources. We're here to help you. So glad that you took the, the time to be here today. And now you're going to be able to be more empowered in your journey. Cindy, I know you love Help True programs. <laughs> which one is your favorite 
Can I call you out like that? <laughs> yes. Um, I, that's hard. Oh my gosh. Because it's like, you know, at different times, we're different places in our journey. And so there's yeah. like probably um, the, the one thing, and actually a, qu a question, I was like getting ready to type it when you were like calling on me, but um, <laughs> sorry. Um, I like to know that my information, okay, so here's my question. I like to know that my information is up to date so that it goes into the main whatever so that, you know, the information's out there that, okay, so many people on Revlimed for two years, you know, anyway, and something came to me, I don't know, in the last two months or so that said, um, that now it won't automate, like I'm on my chart and MD Anderson's my chart does connect with Health Tree, but something about that my uh, results won't automatically go there anymore, that I have to click on something somewhere. Uh oh, I don't. <laughs> and so that's that would be my question. But honestly, I mean, sometimes like I, I, you know, chemo brain, you forget something that, you know, a month ago, I knew every single detail and understood it and could give a report. Okay. And then today I'm like, oh my God, I, which, which classes lenalidomide in, you know? Yeah, yeah. And so then the university's good. Cause I'll go back there. And then other times, you know, it's, it's like, I don't know, each part of it is really important. So hard hard to answer but so the the part about the labs and making sure that they're in health tree do you know what was my question have i voiced my question clearly i don't think so but <laughs> try to decipher what my question was <laughs> <laughs> anna or patty or humana any insight in that So is, is the question that you would like to know how to maintain your labs in Health Tree Cure Hub up to date? Yes, because um, I thought that automatically somebody would check them like every month or two. I don't know. You know, I probably misunderstood. And so then something came to me like in the last two months and it said, um, you because I'm I know that MD Anderson's my chart results hooks it it can hook up, you know, like somebody didn't manually have to enter everything. I thought maybe they were just being nice and told me that so I wouldn't worry about that. But so yes, yeah, so now with my chart automatically hooked or communicates I don't I'm confused obviously because I yeah. can't even ask the question right no no that, that's okay but I, I do understand so um well that's the plan to to have uh, to start pulling all your labs automatically once you connect with uh, my chart for example uh, but right now you'll have to do it for yourself by refreshing the connection I'm not ready to do this but let me see if I can um because uh, when you you say refresh, I, I have no idea what that means. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. I, I understand refresh on a website, but I'm saying, I, so how do I do that? I guess how do I actually go? Like I know that next month I'm going up to MD Anderson and I'll be doing my whole battery of all results. So then two weeks later, when I want to make sure it all gets onto my things at Health Tree. What do I do? Yeah, that is a great question. And yes, it can be confusing. Just give me one second. I'm getting ready. Um, so in while I get this, uh, if someone doesn't can't connect their facility automatically to Cure Hub, uh, you can request, if you're following your numbers, you can request a monthly um, update from us and we can do it manually, but that's under request only. Um, so yes, we can do that. And I'm gonna show you, oh, what? 
but see in there's something about even though once i hook it up okay because again somebody i talked to somebody and they said yes now md anderson is hooked up you know the my chart is hooked up with Heltry, but still after i get my test there's something i still have to do to tell it to transfer it or whatever does that make you know yes right? yes Anna, i can share my screen i've got it up oh okay yeah thank you uh because yeah i, I can't well, <laughs> yeah that'd be great sorry <laughs> No, that's a, that's that's a great question, Cindy. So while um, Sally is getting it, oh wow, Sally! Yes, um, I just tapped it, so I guess I, you can't see it. But yeah, under, 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 right here where it says Indiana University Health, now it says automatic connection. Thirty-five seconds ago, it said sync, S Y N C, and I just clicked it, and it just updated everything. Got it. And this okay. is under Cure Hub and medical records. Okay. Thank so you. first you go to Cure Hub and right. then we medical records. Here I go. Oh, I see. Okay. Then it says connect. Okay. Yeah. You go to Cure Hub. Okay. And then you get to Cure Hub and then you go to medical records. Okay. And then right here, it said sync. Got it. So then I go down to the actual. The whatever, MD Anderson, it'll say sync. Okay. Okay, cool. And now also, if nothing else, it's okay to, because, you know, there's, I, I hate to call y'all because I think, oh, well, you know, I hate to waste y'all's time because you know, I'm three years in and I should know how to do this stuff. Not and, really I'll, you know, I'll go on the site and figure it out. And then, of course, I never do because then, you know, other stuff comes up. But um, it, it's kind of and y'all didn't do y'all didn't put that thought in my head. I did, you know, but it, it's good to hear. No, seriously, call us and, you know, let us walk you through it. We're, that's good. That's we're OK with that. So. Um, that's a good reminder, I guess, if that then you can double check. And I don't know if you saw it because, you know, we were talking. It said after just a minute ago, it says your information has been downloaded. Oh, I didn't see that. But OK, yes. OK. So, and you can just check that by saying tap for details. OK. OK. Cool. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> hey, Sally. Sally sometimes knows our programs better than we do. <laughs> we love Sally. Well, I've learned a lot today. Um, I would suggest that this be one of our coach meetings that you guys sort of review this whole thing because there is more stuff out here than I've seen in six months. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you guys keep updating it so quickly. It's sort of like the drugs. There's another <laughs> image, there's another protein inhibitor, oh, and there's more website stuff. <laughs> it's so true. It's so true. And one other thing, Audrey, because um. And, and truly like this session was awesome because that was the other thing. And it wasn't, it isn't a complaint. It's just something that I've just, again, you know, and y'all didn't do this. It's me putting it on myself. Okay. But, you know, the website was different six months ago. And so now when I go on and I start ago, looking for Cindy. something and I'm like, oh, holy smoke. And then, you know, I don't know. You know, somebody is at the door and then I I don't go back because I'm confused, not because of y'all, but because. No, no, no. You can blame it on us. It's OK. And I'm really sorry to tell you, but it's going to get updated again, like in a couple of weeks. And and that's good but because that means be better. Here. We will be that's here for you to ask questions too when it does get updated. And I know it's frustrating to you. This one's more of a simplification. So this one we're trying to simplify. It's our navigation specifically that's just really kind of difficult to sift through. So we're trying to simplify it. So this one probably will be a friendlier change than the ones you've seen in the past. But if you do, again, Cindy, I loved your comment. Oh, I feel, you know, I feel like I can't call you guys. Call us all the time. 
The only patients we have problem with are the patients that are mean, okay? <laughs> so if you're not being mean, we you can call us every day, you know? Like you can email me all the time. We're here to help you. We care about you. This is a serious thing that all of you are going through. And we've dedicated like a lot of our lives so that you can have a better myeloma journey. Andy, mm-hmm. call me. You know me. <laughs> <laughs> so but I'm serious. Um, is this going to be available on YouTube? This, yeah. Because mm-hmm. this is perfect. I mean, I would love to send this to every one of my coaches because okay. part of my problem is I can't find this. Mm -hmm. and this has been perfect I mean it's hard to find I'll give it to them like as as Patty and Marty Lou and I were working on this literally hours long project we were like wow (laughs) there's a lot out there and if you don't know health tree programs like we know them because we work with them every day it could be very overwhelming so hopefully this helps well like Patty or but like Cindy said you get life gets in the way you you yes. have to make a birthday cake for tomorrow and you get in the middle of something and you can't re- so how did i find that and then you tell somebody you found it and they say well where is it i don't know <laughs> <laughs> yeah very good point good comments in here too by jan she says she likes the patient navigator program coach program and the many medical expert webinars and regional webinar topics Thank you for the work you do. Thank you, Jan. Jan is one of my best supporters in my webinars and love seeing her every time. Bina says, this is a very informative, if I knew how to read (laughs) presentation. Thank you so much to the whole team for the wonderful job you're doing and God bless you all. Thank you so much. Really, it's just, it's a reward to be able to share it with all of you in a way that hopefully makes sense and to get your feedback. So thank you guys. Thank you to each of my panelists for taking the time to be here tonight. Thank you to each of the attendees. I'll let the panelists go and finish up with just a couple of outro announcements and then we can we can go for the night. Um, we do have a couple of upcoming events. So one of the things with webinars, um, one of my primary jobs is to provide webinars to you through education. I guess I never <laughs> told you guys what I do. So I do a lot of stuff. Um, One of the things that I do is webinars. The other kind of half of what I do is write articles for the website and get articles and content ready for the website. So some of the webinars that we have upcoming are Black Myeloma Health Chapter, which is overcoming challenges, obstacles, and surprises together. You met Val tonight. Val is going to be hosting that discussion on the 24th. Then on the 5th, we're going to be hearing about our Myeloma Financial Chapter. That's not even something we touched tonight. But there's so many financial resources on the website, and you'll find those specifically in that Google sheet that we're going to be sharing with all of you. Um, We're going to be talking about uh, social security disability, how to file and get approved. And then on the 7th is our Southeast chapter. We're inviting Dr. Hoffmeister, who's a myeloma specialist, to talk about his research that he's doing with pain management. He's looking into using cannabis, um, opioids, what's effective, what's working for patients, kind of getting real world data um, on, on pain management. The link to sign up for any of those events and even more events I didn't mention is found at the bottom of the slide will be included in our follow-up email. A thank you to Amgen, Abby, Adaptive Biotechnologies, Janssen Oncology, Genentech, and Bristol Myers Squibb. And thank you to each of you. This was an amazing session. Your feedback makes it even better. And I appreciate all of you. Hope you have a great rest of your night. Thank you. Bye-bye everyone.